Hello, Amazon Cognito is a developer-centric and cost-effective customer identity and access management service. It provides a secure identity store and federation options, allowing you to add secure authentication and authorization to your customer-facing applications that can scale to millions of users. Amazon Cognito supports federated login with social identity providers and SAML or OpenID Connect identity providers, and offers advanced security features to protect your customers and business. It supports various compliance standards and frameworks, operates on open identity standards, and integrates with an extended ecosystem of front-end and back-end development resources and SDK libraries. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to create an Amazon Cognito user pool through the AWS console. Within the AWS console, navigate to the Amazon Cognito service. This initial screen might look different if you already have existing user pools in this region. Click Create User Pool. In the first step of creating our user pool, we will select the attribute our users will use to sign in. Consider how you would like your users to sign into your user pool and applications using either username, email, phone number, or a combination of these three. This setting cannot be changed after the user pool has been created. For our example today, we're going to select email for how users will sign in. It's important to note that Cognito User Pools also supports federated login from social identity providers such as Facebook, Google, Login with Amazon, and Sign In with Apple. You can also allow federated login from any SAML 2.0 or OpenID Connect compliant identity provider. Click Next. In the second step, we're going to configure our security requirements for the user pool. In this example for password policy, we're going to use the Cognito defaults. However, you have the ability to define a custom password policy, which includes setting the minimum password length, password requirements, and the number of days a temporary password is valid that is set by an administrator. Next, we're going to configure multi-factor authentication, also known as MFA. For our example, we're going to require MFA and allow the usage of an authenticator app, such as Authy or any compatible time-based one-time password authenticator app. For user account recovery, we're going to allow self-service account recovery using email only. Click Next. In the third step, we're going to configure the signup experience for the user pool. We're going to keep the default settings and allow self-registration for the user pool and allow Cognito to automatically send messages in order to verify and confirm users. We're also going to keep original attribute values active while an update is pending until that changed attribute is verified by the user. Next, you have the option to configure additional required attributes if this meets your requirements. Because we selected the email attribute during the sign-in experience, email is a required attribute. Cognito assigns all users a set of attributes based on the OpenID Connect standard. You have the option to select any of these as being also required. Carefully review attributes selected to be required as required attributes cannot be changed once the user pool has been created. In the last section of the sign-up experience, you also have the option to create up to 50 additional custom attributes for the user pool. You also have the ability to create custom attributes after the user pool has been created if needed. It's important to note that custom attribute names cannot be changed after the user pool has been created. For our example, we will not select any additional required attributes or create any custom attributes. Click Next. In the fourth step, we're going to configure our message delivery. Since this is an example, we're going to choose Send Email with Cognito. This has a limit of sending no more than 50 emails per day. For non-sandbox environments, it is recommended to send emails using Amazon Simple Email Service, also known as Amazon SES. With Amazon SES, you can use a custom verified email address. Also, if you selected to use phone number as a way for users to sign up and sign in, and or selected to use SMS text messaging for MFA, additional options will be displayed for you to configure Amazon Simple Notification Service, also known as Amazon SNS, in order to send SMS text messages. Click Next. In the fifth step, we're going to configure the user pool to integrate with our applications using Cognito's built-in authentication and authorization flows. Start by providing a user pool name. It's important to note that the user pool name cannot be changed after the user pool has been created. Next, we're going to configure the hosted authentication pages, also known as hosted UI. 
This can allow Amazon Cognito to handle the undifferentiated heavy lifting of having to build and maintain your own user interfaces in order to handle sign up and sign in to your applications. Configuring the hosted UI also provides OAuth 2.0 compliant endpoints for your user pool. Select Use the Cognito Hosted UI option. In this example, we're going to use a Cognito domain. You also have the option to configure a custom domain. Your Cognito domain prefix must be unique within the selected region. Next, we're going to configure our initial app client. For this example, a public client will be used and we will not generate a client secret since it will be public. You must configure at least one initial callback URL. In this example, we'll use localhost for now. You can add up to 99 additional callback URLs per app client. You will also have the ability to configure your callback URLs after the user pool has been created. Additionally, you can configure some advanced app client settings, such as authentication flows, token expiration settings, OAuth 2.0 grant types, amongst other settings. Lastly, you can configure the read and write permissions the app client will have to your attributes. For this example, we will use the default configurations for the advanced app client settings and the attribute permissions. Click Next. The final step in creating an Amazon Cognito user pool will provide you an opportunity to review all of your selections and confirm everything is correct. If changes are needed, you can select the Edit option next to each respective step. Give extra attention to all settings that display a caution symbol, as these are more than likely settings that cannot be changed after the user pool is created. Scroll to the bottom of the page to fully review all selections. After reviewing everything, click the Create User Pool button. A notification will be visible at the top of the screen to indicate the successful creation of the user pool. In this video, I demonstrated how to create an Amazon Cognito user pool in the AWS console, including how to configure the sign-in experience, security requirements, sign-up experience, message delivery, and application integration settings. If you would like to learn more about Amazon Cognito, visit the service page online at aws.amazon.com forward slash cognito.